Hi guys, it is Monday. Happy Martin Luther King Day. I am um, finally carving out a little time to share this literal squish with you guys. I revealed her in my last video. This is my full, bone, full body silicone baby. Um, her name is Sadie. I've named her Sadie, but her sculpt name is, she's the, the Josie Ann. She's number four of 10, made by Romy Stridum. And um, I did not get her new. Of course, she's from, she's about six years old. So I just wanted to share her with you guys and chat just a little bit. What's going on, Jackie? You crying? Hi. <laughs> I think he's upset because he's kind of like trapped away from me. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and change her. And I wanted to say, because I keep forgetting to say it, um, I wanted to say thank you to all of you who um, watch and like and comment and take the time to say um, encouraging and positive things and share your opinions on things and everything on my videos. And I know that I, at best, and I think across the board, go back through and heart comments. I really don't, for the most part, do a lot of responding back. Um, but I wanted to make sure I said thank you because I enjoy and appreciate every comment and um, I just, I don't know, it, it's, it's noticed and it's appreciated and it's enjoyed and I, uh, and I, I don't think I say it much so. Her hair will obviously be a bit of a hot mess, still cute, but from being underneath this bonnet I'm going to change her into this outfit that came to me uh, with her um, from the mommy I got her from. It's a brand new Next outfit. Um, still has the tags on it. It's got these little, uh, what is this, tool? So it's got the little butterfly wings and the ballerina tutu around it. And I'm going to put a little headband on her with the butterfly on it too. So it'll be nice and sweet together. So the story with her, I'm not sure how much I mentioned in the last video. You know, I knew that eventually I would get another full body silicone. I, I thought I would be going for a one piece pour, which means a, the neck is all one piece of the body. And I was looking at a baby and I shared it with my friend who had this baby and was, and you know, telling her kind of about my dilemma of you know you want the doll but you don't know that you want to pay for the doll <laughs> so she happened to mention that she had this girl available and she sent me pictures and I was like oh man so first of all I never considered a Romy Striden baby I it gets really real once you start in, a, in an actual conversation with somebody right I don't know if these are her hairs or, or what. They might be. Um, and I looked at her and I looked at her and I looked at her and I just really like loved her. And I'm so happy with her. I really am. And this friend happens to be local. So it was about a 45 minute drive to get to her, pick her up in person and bring her home, which really satisfies the, um, you know, instant gratification side of me. She's, um, I mentioned in the last, you know, in the video that I showed her in, she's about 12 pounds. She's a big girl. She is about zero to three month size, which is nice. It's nice for outfit options. I like it. She is, um, so my first silicone was a newborn size, but a nice 
you know, full newborn size. Sorry, I know I'm like, you probably can't even see what I'm seeing, but my hair was on her. Um, but there's something about her, so I've never seen a Romy Stridum baby in person before, and there is just this life in her eyes. And of course, the doll is made beautifully, the sculpting and the painting, even being six years old, um, she's still a sight to behold. Right? So she's, um, I think she's Eco 20. She's much denser than Nova was. She doesn't bend as much in the midsection as Nova does, but also she doesn't, you know, like her arms don't fall behind her um, in an unrealistic way. She has armatures in her arms, but I can't feel them unless I'm using them. So it just gives some structure that they can go, you know, straight or bent in varying degrees. And they're pretty easy to use. Her head, obviously it turns and it also will tilt up and tilt down, which I just, I love, I love her. I really do. She's so sweet. She has blue eyes and this sort of like strawberry blonde slash light brown hair. And then the little hairs all around here are painted. This is painted. And then there's rooting on top of it. I do have who turned me on to this was um, at Katie from My Little World. It's a new Lambu leave-in conditioning hair polish. It's so light, so light. Um, It's, it doesn't, it, it dries quickly and it doesn't like weigh the hair down or leave any kind of residue at all. It's, it's just very, it's really nice. Like it doesn't leave a build up or I like to have, she, I can get this hairstyle going with her where she's got a row of three curls. So it's kind of like a, like a mohawk of curls. It's so cute. But I think maybe after I have her dressed, I'll do that because I don't want to get this all over my fingertips and then be handling her. Anyway. So cute girl. I've gotten lots of comments lately, as I'm sure um, you know, other channel creators get wondering oh look this has legs too i thought this was like a dress oh this is cute and lots of comments lately asking um where did you get that doll and how do i get a doll like this so let me answer a couple questions too um i don't typically answer the where did you get that doll question just because you know usually flying by when I see them and that information is in the video. So if it's a box opening, maybe I didn't put it in the description because you know, I still kind of go old school style where I figure you're watching through and then surprise, here's this baby when in reality, we mostly all of us just fast forward through. Well, not everybody, but, but it's, it's going to either be in the description box if it's not the first reveal of the baby most times or it's in the video itself so if it's it's not in the description it's in the video itself so there's a coa that's shared there's a birth certificate that's shared and i don't, I don't really think it's kind of it's like a butthead move to say like it at least put in the work like the effort to like watch for the information yourself if you're watching somebody's video. Like, if you're gonna go on their video and not even bother to watch the whole thing, then I don't know. Like, can you really ask them to just, like you, they're already giving you the information of where they got the doll. So go through the video and watch, and you'll hear who the artist is, who the sculptor is, um, whether I bought from the artist direct or whether I got it secondhand. All of that will be in the video. So if I don't answer, that's generally why, because the information's already been provided and that's 
that's that, which kind of goes to the second question, which is how do I get a doll like that? And there's no real like one way that I respond to stuff like that. Um, a lot of it just depends on like how somebody reaches out to me and how they reach out to me, if you know what I mean, like the, the tone. And it, here's kind of why, like, first of all, there's so much information about reborns. It's very difficult to even start to type that up. Like how you find reborns, how you know what to look for, what they should cost, how you know if it's not scamming you, all of that stuff. And there's so many resources here, just right here on YouTube from um, fellow content creators on how to watch for scams and all that stuff, that that stuff is available. Um, and another part of it is that most of us that have been in the hobby for years have spent years accumulating information and it's such a subjective hobby. No one can tell you what you're gonna like. Some people prefer satin varnish, some people prefer matte varnish, some people love texture, some people hate texture, some people prefer to have a bunch of dolls that are uh, more, you know, under $500 and some people prefer to have a few dolls that are over $2,000. Um, some people don't mind waiting for a custom. Some people only want a ready-made doll. You might go secondhand. There's very, very voluminous information out there. There's also something to be said for earning that knowledge through time invested, because then you're really discovering it on your own. Like you can't glean, you know, in my case, not very much, but in my case, let's say three and a half years you can't gain like three and a half years of research in a paragraph response. It's just not, not possible. And it also, again, it's like, it's not your own. So, um, like Google is a, is a friend. YouTube is a big friend. I cannot even tell you how many years of my life I invested just in hours of YouTube watched. And I mean, it was when I was washing dishes, when I was cooking, when I was cleaning, when I was relaxing, I had reborn YouTube videos on. Box openings, reviews, care videos, um, routine videos, chat videos, topic videos. And that's also how you get to know people in the community. That's how you start to come across people that may be selling. And it's how you start to learn about what this art is, even though I'm changing a silicone. You know, it's collectible dolls, reborns, and silicones. Uh, most of my dolls are reborns, though. So sweet. So um, I would recommend watching a lot of YouTube, you know, put in searches for hashtags for reborn doll on Instagram, start getting yourself involved in the community there. If you're interested in buying, search hashtag reborn for sale and go on Facebook. Understand that if you are looking for an actual reborn doll, at minimum, at minimum, and this is going to be for, you know, a budget baby unless you get very, very lucky. And you can definitely get scammed at this price point, um, you know, a couple hundred dollars. And then of course, auctions I've seen go over. I've never spent anywhere near this, but over 7,000 for a vinyl reborn. So it's gonna depend on the artist, the, the, the amount of people looking for the doll, whether it's sold on eBay or private direct sale. Um, so I, I'm careful with Facebook groups, but there's a doll fan Facebook group. There's high-end Facebook groups um, where you can get a lot of information, get a lot of garbage. You can also buy dolls off of reborns.com. Other than that, I would highly recommend, you know, getting in there for yourself, putting in some time and effort and research into learning and um, it'll help you to establish what you like and prevent you from making too many decisions that uh, you may regret. So. I've also recently been asked how I afford 
these dolls and uh, everybody that was very gracious to jump in and say that's none of your business and it's true but it is a fair question that I myself wondered when I got into it um, and it was tinged with jealousy of I wish I could just have one so I get it and it is definitely, um, I'm not offended by it unless you say something offensively, I'm not offended by it. So I'll tell you that um, I, st I started with a $200 custom off of eBay and then, and then I bartered for my partner at the time. Um, when I wanted a bit more high-end doll, I spent what I had and then I bartered like, um, so that he, you know, he gave me the money in exchange for some things I did for his business. After that, it became about selling things, um, shoes I didn't wear, going on Poshmark, stuff like that, selling dolls, um, you know, save up a little bit, sell the, you know, the, the doll that I got that was maybe a little less expensive, put that towards the new doll and working my way up that way. I think I like that, it's so cute. I also work. I also don't buy other things. So, you know, it's all about where you put your money. I don't buy handbags. I don't buy a lot of expensive clothing. I did um, up until recently when I started shopping from home, bought most of my clothes from consignment shops, even my work clothes, just brand new with tags off of a consignment shelf. Um, saved me a lot of money there. Wore way too old bras and didn't invest in makeup, didn't go out to get my hair done, didn't go out to get my nails done, didn't really go out to eat at restaurants. So um, it's about where you put your funds and it's about patience. I also created a little bit of debt for myself with the dolls. So that is something to be aware of. It's certainly an option, PayPal credit and things like that. Um, but you can get yourself in real deep, real fast, but it happens. It most certainly happens. So that's how I afford my dolls. Um, yeah. Where do I store my dolls was another recent question. So I have this, of course, bassinet, and it's on a bassinet rocker holder. One baby will go in here. Obviously, right now it's Sadie, and you know it may remain Sadie just because of her size and um, you know how I can most maximize my storage real estate. So this sits in my like living room, and then in the bedroom I have a, like a bassinet, more of a crib style bassinet. It's a, and that one has two dolls in it. And that has my um, my Amelia and my Lulu, Veda and Winnie. They're in it together as sisters, so that works out really well. And then I have it's kind of like a pack and play or a rolling um, co sleeper stroller. I mean crib. And I can fit six babies in there sitting up um, on the top. And then the bottom has a zippered storage section where I can put some blankets and I put like the originals of the clothes down there. Um, so that's six, seven, eight, nine. So that's nine dolls and that's how they all go. Um, I do have a stroller that had, that's like a bassinet or a seated convertible thing. I don't really keep that out much unless I'm just kind of enjoying the cuteness of a display for a little bit because it just, I try not to be too cluttered in my space, but that's how I keep them. So I have, you know, and that crib, I could take everybody out and use it for photos. It wheels, it can wheel in and out and it stays in my walk-in closet, uh, which isn't huge, but I have a walk-in closet in the bedroom in my apartment. So that goes in there and the doll clothes are in baskets up on the upper shelf in the, in the walk-in closet. And then the, this, like I said, this basket stays out in the living room and then the bassinet stays, this is a Moses basket, the bassinet stays out displayed in my bedroom, um, but it can wheel into the closet as well if I want that space or I'm cleaning or that kind of thing. So that's how I store it. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there is anything else I wanted to say. I do have one other thing, but I think I'll save it for another video. So there she is. This is by um, Pearly and Pretty Design over on Instagram, this headband. I've got a bunch from her. 
think I showed a lot of them on videos. Here's some of them. I have another like card of them that's in the room still. I have another like five in the other room and then this is like a head, she calls this a head dress, I think. Much bigger, isn't that gorgeous though too? Haven't really decided on, and then this one. Um, oh yeah, I was gonna do a little bit of a spritzy here. Let's see if I can get her curls up. Oh, a little more shiny. Yes, I didn't go, I wasn't very conservative that time. You can see how wet, but her hair was kind of dried from being underneath that bonnet. Now the headband, um, I'll keep on her for some pictures and stuff, and then I'll probably take it off. I don't like to keep the headbands on for too long. Just because it makes an indentation in her hair, and you never know if it's pulling and yanking, and the silicone hair comes out very easily because it can't be glued like a reborn, as I'm sure you guys know. But anyway, this is uh, Sadie Wynn, Josie Ann number four <laughs> by Lily Stridham. I hope you enjoyed looking at her and um, it was good to catch up with you guys real quick over this 20 plus minute video. Um, but we'll be back sometime soon. Hope you guys are enjoying your day, whether you're working, whether you're off today. Again, happy Martin Luther King Day. Um, certainly taking some time myself to think about what today represents as well. So sending out lots of love to you guys. We will be back before too long. Bye for now.